What's up guys, Watchful Stoic here. It's been a little bit. Took uh, last week off. Uh, but it is a super bright, super hot day. My car thinks it's 117 degrees outside. It's really cloudy, but it's like 108 degrees out there. It's it's hot. It's it's really hot. Um, man, it's, it's burning out here. Um, but yeah, no, last week was was quite quite hectic. It's uh, a lot of stuff with work, a lot of stuff with church, a lot of stuff with uh, you know the house, you know. But anyway. I'm working on, I'm going to be reading through a new book, it's called, uh, I'll hold it up here real quick, QBQ, Question Behind the Question by John G. Miller. Um, basically, uh, you know, the book is about personal accountability and uh, eliminating procrastination and really figuring out the right questions to ask to eliminate victim thinking and uh, bad choices. From your from your behavior, you know it's not a be all end all to what should I do here because everyone's still going to continue to make mistakes even if they do ask the right questions. You know, sometimes you can, you know, and in the words of Jean Luc Picard, you can still do you can do everything right and still do still lose, and that's just kind of the way it is. Um, but anyway, before I jump into it, like, share, comment, subscribe. You know, I know I've been away for a week, but I uh, would love to have some interaction, and yeah. So, very. So the premise of the book, like the from the from the get go, what is what is the question behind the question? What what is it? Um, well, he starts off with giving some examples of bad questions to ask. Um, he was driving down the road and he saw a sign that said where. You know, per, where is all the personal accountability? Where is it? Um, and he gave uh, another example where he went into a coffee shop, and uh, you know he wanted to get some coffee, obviously, and he noticed that the little craft of coffee was empty, and he said, "Hey, excuse me, sir, this this craft's empty. Can I get some more coffee, please?" And you know, dude behind the counter points over at some lady. Working next to them, like ten feet away, and says, "It's not my job. That's her job." You know. And then the the last example he gave was uh, the he was getting on an airplane, and the in-flight inter entertainment was supposed to be a certain movie, and I guess the movie got switched, or the or the movie never got put into the plane, so. The, the lady, the stewardess, she says, goes, well, because this this uh, uh, set of people didn't do their job, we got this other movie that we're going to give you, so you're not going to get the one you wanted, you're going to get the one that was left behind, and so, you know, these, these are all examples of foregoing responsibility, and not really taking accountability for yourself. Um... But then he goes on to a different example. A, this is a, this is a opposite example. He went into a restaurant to, you know, it's one of his favorite restaurants. He was in a little, little bit of a hurry, and you know, no one was helping him out. And the guy stopped. And it's like, hey, you doing all right? You ever, you good? You need help with something? It's like, yeah, I, I, I'm actually kind of in a hurry. I haven't been able to had a chance to order my food yet. You know, well, I just want a salad and some rolls. You know. And if you if you got it, I want a diet coke. And the guy says we don't have diet coke. What, is there any other soda I can get you? And he says no, I'll just take a water with a lemon, please. And, um, it's like sure thing, I got you. Um, so then a couple minutes later, comes out salad, water with a lemon, rolls, all good, all set. And then you know he's like, all right, cool. He's, I'm gonna you know. So he starts eating his food, and um, a couple minutes later, big old glass of Diet Coke popped down right in front of him. And he says, Wow, I thought you guys didn't serve this. It's like, We don't. Someone, you know, that we got it from the store around the corner. It's like, How, like, I thought you were busy. Didn't you, didn't you need to focus on that? And I was like, No, I got my manager to go get it for me real quick. So it was only, it's only a dollar. And so the impression that is left on uh, the author, John, 
I'm gonna call him John because that's his name. Um, the impression it left behind is the question that this particular server was asking, asking himself was, "What more can I do? What value can I bring? Is there a way that I can help and I can provide value? What can I do?" Um, and these different internal questions dictate how you choose to behave next. Um, the, the question of who is, is a form of you know, blaming someone else. The question of, uh, of where means well, it's, it's, a, it's a way of forsaking your own personal valid accountability. Same thing with why. Why does this happen to me? Where are where are all my where's my help at? And who can who can help me out here? All right, the, those those three questions like the the who, where, and why are bad questions are, are the usually the start of bad questions to ask versus the what and how questions uh, are usually better questions to ask. It's like how can I help? What can I do? It's usually how and what, and then you have to. You know, include yourself in the in the question. How can I make life easier for other people today? How can I provide value? How can I, you know, succeed? What do I need to do to make things better? What do I need to do to help give that person a great experience? What do I need to do in order to get the lights working? It's a matter of taking upon yourself accountability for the for your situation and. You know, usually you start off with the incorrect questions. If you get thrown into a, a stressful situation, you will start asking yourself the incorrect questions. You know, how, like, why, why did this thing happen? That's not necessarily a bad question, but it's not, it's not, like, you, sure, figuring out what's going on is a good thing to do. Figuring out what is happening is a good thing to do. But then asking yourself the better question, what can I do to help make it better? What can I do to help make things easier? Um, you know, part of, you know, I was listening to, doc, to uh, Dr. Peter, Dr. Uh, Jordan Peterson, and, you know, one of the things he talks about is how conscientious people tend to have, you know, greater relative success in their lives. And what is conscientiousness? Conscientiousness is the effort to do as good of a job as you possibly can. Um, that is that is what is considered to be conscientious. Um, let's see, this guy's gonna win up there. He is. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, so the question behind uh, the question that you should be asking is a form of conscientiousness and being able to determine what you need to do. Um, and in terms of what kind of thought processes lead to the, these kinds of things? It usually takes time. It takes deliberate, deliberate action to really just change your thought process. And you got to slow yourself down because everyone is very quick to react. Like it's really easy to react in a, in a negative manner. It's really easy, you know. But how much effort does it take to take a second or two before you respond, before you react, and really ask the correct questions? Because when you ask good questions, you get good answers. When you ask bad questions, you get bad answers. So you don't usually go anywhere when you ask bad questions. Um, but he ended up going back to that um, that same restaurant later, and he asked for his uh, the, that same server. And it turns out that's you know he says yeah no that he's not a server anymore. And it's like oh no did you lose him? It's like, no, he's, he's management now. And it's like, well, yeah, I guess when you're asking the right questions, you tend to have a proclivity for growth and success and, and forward momentum. So, never underestimate the power of good questions. Um, then, one, the, the last example that I was reading was he was talking about uh, a guy who had received a promotion to a corporate office I believe, um, and through his like diligent efforts, and 
after about two years, like, he hadn't been delivering exactly what the corporation had promised, well, what he had promised, promised corporation, or he had, he had failed to live up to certain, some certain standards, and they were figure, trying to figure out what was up. And, you know, so they brought in John Miller, and, you know, so they said, hey, help us out here. And so we started asking, you know, he started asking, like, well, what kind of what's your thought processes during all this? What do you, what do you, what kind of questions are you asking? And it's like, started victim, like he, he had become the victim of his situation. His thought process had gone from being conscientious to being the victim. And no matter where you're at, you can always slip back in, like it's, it's part, that's part of entropy. You can always slip backward. That's that going backward is easy. There, it's very easy to go backwards. It's very hard to go forwards. Going forward takes consistent, considerable effort. So no matter what, you always got to be asking yourself the right question. You always got to be checking yourself and figuring out what it is you're doing wrong. You know, take personal accountability for yourself. Um, but anyway. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter video. I, uh, yeah, that's about as far as I got in the book. I'm going to have, have more for you tomorrow. Um, this is a, this is a, not a very long book. I might just do little short videos for the, for these ones. If you like the shorter, like the shorter form videos, let me know. Um, because I, I, if this is more digestible. I might cut it, cut it down. If, if not, I can keep it closer to 17. Uh, cause I try to shoot for like 17 minutes. Um, because usually my, my attention span usually goes 17 to 18, 19 minutes, and then I kind of start trailing off a look at the time. It's like, how long is this video going to take? Um, but anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. If it's hot there, stay hydrated. Do not die. I would be very sad if you guys died. Um, love you all. I hope you have a, have a wonderful day.